will continue our session of praise. We'll just add a few things in it, but we are still singing hymns. Amen. 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 We'll start with, my Jesus, I love thee. God has been so marvelous. He's been so good to us. I mean, as we've sung the songs this morning, we can see that these hymns kept us going. And he showered his love upon us. And we love him because of that. Because he first gave us the assurance. And because he first loved us. Amen. Amen. So this is from uh, hymn 3 to 1. We sing the first stanza, the last stanza. Then we'll add something there. A bit different, but you can still join us. Amen.
saying? Hello children, good morning and happy Sabbath. We are glad to come your way once again this Sabbath morning. I hope you are keeping safe and observing all COVID-19 protocols. We hope to meet physically one of these days. This morning we have come again with our usual Sabbath song. At this time we are going to do who has come to church today. We want to know everybody who has come to church today. Uncle Lema, please give us that tune as we go. We know that man called Noah. Today we are going to sing about him. When he had to build an ark. But Uncle Emma will give us that tune whilst we sing the Noah song. Uncle Emma. Noah hammers with one hammer and two hammers and three hammers. Children, let's sing together. children. Today we are glad to have Aunt Judith here who is going to tell us our Bible story this morning. But before that we will read our scripture reading from the book of Genesis. Children pick up your Bibles and open to the book of Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6 verse 7. Genesis is the first book in the Old Testament. And we are reading from the 6th chapter. Then verse 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. Aunt Judith, can you tell us a Bible story? Thank you, Auntie Uzoma. You're welcome, Auntie. Hello, children. I know you've all heard about Noah. Noah was a very old man and he lived a long time ago. The children of God decided to become very, very stubborn and God was disappointed. Hmm. You know it. Hmm. He didn't like what they were doing on the earth at all. He was sad. So one day, he noticed that ah, there was this man and his family, very righteous, very obedient. They served God with all their hearts. Hmm. So God approached him. He said, Noah, I know you have been serving me so well. I want you to do something very small for me. I want you to preach to these people. Because they have been doing things that are really upsetting me. Oh. I know that when you speak to them, they may have a change of heart and repent from their evil ways. And tell them that if they don't change, I will send a flood that is going to destroy the whole earth. No one was so oh good. But if you destroy the whole or the whole earth, all of us will also die. He said, oh, you know me. I always have a plan. So don't worry. You preach to them and get them to come and join you and save the Lord. I want you to build a very big ark. 
If you don't know what an ark is, it is a bigger version of a boat. We won't call it a ship. Oh, the ones now, the, mm, those ones are lux uh, luxury ships. And you know, but it's not that one. He told him to build a beautiful ark. And also, make sure he gets all the kinds of animals we have to go into the ark as well. Two by two. All the species. So Noah started preaching to the people. A flood is coming. A flood is coming. Repent from your evil ways so that you will be saved. Trans, it was raining. Huh? It wasn't raining, no. It was very dry. Very dry. So the people were like, ah. That was the last time you saw if you rain or you this old man, you are talking too much. You talk too much. Are you the one to tell us that a flood is coming? What do you know? You don't know anything. Oh, you are on your time has passed. Please go away. But he didn't give up. He had faith in God. He continued. A flood is coming. Repent, my people. Repent. Or if not, you would die. Oh. What? Are you the one going to tell us that we are going to die? What do you know? Look at, look at the world. Look at how we are enjoying life. You cannot say anything. We will not follow you. What do you know? He kept on doing God's word. Building the ark. Building the ark with his family because the people wouldn't even help him to build the ark. Oh. They didn't help him, auntie. But he didn't give up. He preached and preached and preached. Said, Won't you people join me here and be safe? They said, no. We, we don't want to be safe. We will go out. You see in this COVID era, they were walking without their masks. They didn't put it on. They said, we don't care. We will still survive. No problem. He preached and preached and preached. And finally, the D-Day came. And Noah, with his wife, his three sons, Shem, Ham and Japheth and their wives walked majestically into the ark. Can't see with the animals. Yes, so two by two. Surprisingly, nobody knows where they came from. All of a sudden, you will see the lion. Lion, Mr. Lion, Mrs. Lion, Mr. Tiger, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Tiger. Mm -hmm. Hey! Mm -hmm. They were coming. All of the zebras, snakes, everybody. And these people were there, oh, look at him, which rain, which rain. Oh, look at this old man. I will laugh at him more if it doesn't rain. We will laugh at him. They didn't say anything. They went inside, they locked up the ark. And to the people's surprise, guess what happened? Yes. Who can yes. tell me? Auntie, I have an idea. Tell me, Auntie. It started raining. Ha! Ah, you are right, Auntie. Rain. Rain. Rain and it flooded the whole place. And do you know for how long? 40 days and 40 nights. I know you know what happened to the people who were disobedient. They all died. Oh, you see, children, if you listen to the word of God and follow all the things He tells you to do you would always live long. And God's promises, they never fail. Yes. He saved Noah, his family, and even the animals. I know you are going to listen and do the same thing anytime your parents tell you to do something. Always listen to God because he would always come out for you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Auntie Judy. You're welcome, It's Auntie. been a wonderful Sabbath with a Noah story. Auntie Judy says, listen to your parents. When they tell you to do something, do it so that you'll be safe. So until we come to your way next Sabbath, keep staying safe, keep washing your hands, and keep being God's children. Auntie, what do we say to the children? Bye. Bye.
in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I welcome each and every one of you to our church service. And for those of you watching us from our various social media handles, this church is coming to you right from the Prince Emmanuel Seventh day Adventist Church, Ringway Estate, Osu, in Accra. It is a privilege for us to worship on this holy day because the Almighty's presence is here. Amen. Amen. Please, if you are joining us through our social media handles, please invite your friends also to join us because we are going to have a special time in the presence of God. This is a holy convocation and God is going to bless his children. Let us be in the spirit of worship and let us be assured that in his presence, burdens are lifted. In his presence, hope is restored. In his presence, the weak are strengthened and encouraged. In his presence, above all, blessings abound. Amen. Amen. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Our gracious and everlasting Father, the mighty one, the one who is above all things, this morning, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you adoration for another beautiful Sabbath. We thank you so much that in course of the six days, you took care of us. Day after day, night after night, you protected us. You provided for us. You led us. And we say, may thanks be unto your name. We thank you for this special time. A time that you have invited us to come into your presence on your holy day so we can have a communion with you, so we can renew our relationship with you. Father in heaven, we are praying that you forgive us all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we know that now that you have cleansed us, we invite your presence to be with us. Please take your seat among our midst. Please let your angels be in charge of the four corners of this auditorium. And let today our worship be acceptable. And if our friends are on their way, some of them are on their way, come in, we commit them into your care. That you grant them travel mercies, that they can join us. That together we will worship you on this day. We thank you so much for an answered prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
know the the story how and the the controversy that was between and the enmity that was between the Jews and the Samaritans because the woman also said how come you Jew ask me of the water uh, of water and heard the interruptions later on she ran back to the city and the, all the city came out and they besought Jesus to stay with them two days and they said we no longer believe because of what you told us but because of what we heard for ourselves so does it actually show us that no matter who the person is his background wherever he's coming from his language there seems to be some void in us that can only be filled with the word of god is it so yes everybody needs the gospel everybody needs the message uh, everybody will see as a potential candidate for heaven uh, so we don't need to discriminate just as Christ accepts us, you must accept everybody. Uh, it's so unfortunate sometimes when you go for evangelism, you look at somebody so you can't read it. He doesn't need the material. Who told you he doesn't need it? What shows that the person doesn't need it? So we must surrender ourselves to the Holy Spirit who lead us. When the Holy Spirit leads you, and I guide you, and whatever you do is guided by the Holy Spirit. So we need to surrender our life to the Holy Spirit first. The most like community, don't they need the gospel? They need it. The pagans, they need it, right? Almost everybody needs the gospel. So we must be able to go as the word the God say. Go into the word and preach the gospel to everybody. So we don't need to say, uh, A, need the gospel, B, doesn't need it. No, who are you? It's the spirit must, that, that must lead us to okay. do that. But uh, also in the scriptures, when you read Luke chapter 8, verses 37, and Mark chapter 5, verses 17, at Samaria, the people were very receptive to the gospel. But at Gadarene, the people were not receptive. After Jesus healed the demoniac, the people came to him at the shore and begged him to leave their shore. So in difficult places like this place, like Gadarene, how are we to handle such places? Because Jesus healed the man who was possessed with demon, and the people came, he was now fine. They came and they begged him. The, the Bible said they, they feared after what, after what had happened. And instead of them to listen, they said Jesus should leave their shore. And he did. So in difficult places like this, and you can see it also in the life of the apostles. In Ephesus, they wanted to even to Stone Paul, in other places in, in, in the book of Acts. They, they had challenges at places. So how are we to approach such difficult grounds? I think, um, first of all, we have to always realize that even in receptive places, it is not our duty to do the transformation. All we can do is to share the word and to share the word according to us, like we learned last two weeks, or that Bimpo made a statement that you share the message based on the circumstances and the situation, yes. So it's not up to us to do the transformation, even if with receptive heart. So we just have to believe that if the Holy Spirit guides us to go, we go. In, it is in his might that we are going to transform. But of course, there are some places where it becomes life-threatening. Honestly, it becomes very life-threatening. And yes, you just have to be wise about that. But at the end of the day, you can do your best, which is to share the word in the circumstances, in the situation where you find yourself. But it is God that will do the transformation, no matter how difficult it is. Yeah. So thank you very much. So believers, we need the Spirit of God to lead us in order to do Without the Spirit, there's nothing that we can do. So we need him to lead us and to direct our path and whatever that we need to do. Let, let's move on. In Matthew chapter 15 also, this Canaanite woman come to Christ and asked him to heal her daughter. But the woman, Jesus said, we don't give children's food to dogs. And the woman persisted and said that even the crumbs from the table, the, the dogs uh, eat it. Jesus granted her desire and said, woman, great is your faith. And let's look at Mary Madeline also in, in Mark chapter 14. Mary Madeline, Jesus, she was caught in the valley at Jesus healed her. Mark said she, uh, he delivered her from seven demons. And at Simon's table, uh, she comes and she poured perfume at Christ's feet and cleaned it with her. The Bible said, uh, she was criticized sharply 
But Jesus recommended what he have done. So let's look at these two instances, these two passages. What lessons can we learn from them that will help us develop a winning attitude? Well, we are all different. Uh, you don't treat... Uh, maybe Mr. A the same as you treat Mr. B. And then in this situation, Christ knows them. He knows the women. Uh, probably Christ knows that Mama, then if you condemn her, that will be the end of it. Jesus knows maybe her weaknesses. She knows that she cannot persist. That if she condemn her, that will be the end of it. And the other woman, Jesus knows very well that when he rejects her, she will persist. And Jesus wants to see that in her to develop. So Jesus gave her the answer. So that tells us that whenever we go out there to preach the gospel, we don't need to treat everybody the same. You will meet circumstances differently. And as you surrender ourselves to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit leads us to how to treat each and each individually. So it's very important for us, again, once again, that you allow the Holy Spirit to lead us whenever we are going for evangelism. Because we will meet different situations. And it's the Spirit that will lead us how to treat those people. Okay. Okay. So, so we see persistence here in developing a winning attitude. We need to persist. In Luke 18, verses 1, Jesus told the parable of that we should persist, how we should, we should not give up with prayer. So we have to persist. If you're asking something from God, let's persist. Let's show gratitude. Mel- uh, Madeline came to Jesus to show appreciation for what he has done for her. So let's show appreciation also and to help us develop a winning attitude. Let's open our Bibles to Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 3 and 4. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 3 and 4. But before then, uh, the truth is truth. That's how you present the truth actually matter. Because in Ephesians 4.15, uh, Paul said we should present the truth in love. But I think the truth is truth. So no matter how you say it, it is it. So if, so the question is, does how we present the truth actually matter? And if yes, how are we to present the truth in love? I think sometimes we forget that we ourselves, we are vulnerable and we are in need of forgiveness from God. And no matter how many times we sin and sin, we go back, God, we are sorry, God will forgive us. He still forgives us. But then when it's up to us to also extend that kind of forgiveness to other people, it becomes very difficult to do. And we are always quick to point fingers at people. But anytime you point a finger, you know that there's three pointing back at you. You know, yes. So it's always about just looking at Christ. Christ forgives you all the time. So why, why can't you also forgive other people? And it's very difficult to get it. It's very difficult. But once you know that I am also not perfect, I am also struggling, it makes it easy for you to accept that the other person is also struggling. You are all struggling. So then you can extend the hand of forgiveness and acceptance to the other people. And also the fact that sometimes you know that, oh, you have the word. The word that you have is truth. It's salvation. So you don't go and stand somewhere and like repent or like, you know, like forcing the word on people. Do you get it? Hey, but you share the word accordingly. Just because you are going on evangelism doesn't mean if you go to a house and they are mourning, that is the time for you to go and preach a message of salvation. I don't think it will work at that moment. But then as you've learned in previous lessons, sharing the truth in love also means knowing what to share at what time so that you meet the person at their need, not because you have a word to share. Just go ahead and share anyway. Yeah. Oh, oh. The so, truth hurts. It's also hurts. But the truth hurts but with a lasting and loving relationship when accepted. Okay. Um, the way we present the truth is very important. Don't be arrogant about it. Don't condemn the person. You have to present in the spirit of humility and meekness. Then the person can accept it. Anybody that tells the truth means that the person loves you. The one that hates you, whatever you say, will go along it. Oh, we will, we will not rebuke you. But whosoever rebuke you, the person loves you. He wants you on the right path. That's why you're doing it. So as a Christian, it's very important to us that whenever we are presenting the message to other people, we must do it in the spirit of humility and meekness. When we don't do that, it means we are condemning the people. And Christ doesn't condemn. He always opens his hands for people to come to him. And we must do that at all times. Okay. So, so let's read 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. 
And let's look at some of the compliments that Paul gives to the church in Thessalonica. Okay, I read. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God, for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. So what reason did Paul give? What compliment that he gave to the church in Thessalonica? That they are constantly growing in faith, even though they have a lot of reasons to be faithless or do otherwise. But regardless of everything they go through, they are constantly growing in faith. And I think that's also a lesson for us, that no matter what happens to us, just as the woman was persistent and was still going back to God, even though God kept refusing her to the point where God actually exclaimed that, yeah, a great woman of faith, we should also still persist in faith in all things. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so Paul also give another reason for us to accept others, to have that's when in attitude, that spirit of acceptance. Let's quickly read Romans chapter 15, verses 7, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 32. Romans chapter 15, verses 7, and Ephesians chapter 4, verses 32. I have um, Romans 15, verse 7. It says, Wherefore receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Okay, so Ephesians 4, 32. Ephesians 4, 32. Okay. And be and be kind one to another, mm-hmm. tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Okay, so, so does he give a reason for us to accept each and every one, no matter the person, standard, his class? Does he give a reason for us to do that? Yes, I think the reason is because God also forgives you, regardless of everything. You keep sinning, you go back. Every day you are praying for forgiveness. God still forgives you and still loves you. But then... When your neighbor, your spouse, your friend does something to you, you just want to hold grudges for so long, you are just not willing to let go. I think we should, this lesson should really help us to learn how to let go, just as God lets go of our sins as well. Yeah, yeah we must accept people just as they, they are, just as the way Christ has accepted us. Uh, you may be struggling with different things in your hidden area in life, sinful act. Maybe the person is not, is not condemning you. But the person that you are seeing as a bit all those things, you are seeing it. But Christ loves him just as he loves you. So you must accept him. He's a, a sinner just like you, in need of God's grace. We are all struggling together. We are all trying to get there. You may be maybe on the high level. He's on the lower, a little bit lower. So you need that acceptance to be able to encourage him to get there. If you don't encourage each other, then uh, we are condemning the person. So it's very important to accept everybody just they are. Very important. Okay. It's a difficult one uh, in such that you hate the things about him by the person repeatedly doing it. And you need the Holy Spirit to be able to accept such things. You have a friend all the time, he continues hurting you, but because the person is a, a potential candidate for heaven, you must tolerate all those things and then look at the good in him and breathe on him and gradually you bring the person to Christ. Okay. So in Romans chapter 5 verses 8, the Bible said, God commanded his love towards us that while we are yet sin for us, the price that was paid for the best of us is the same price that was paid for the least of us. So we are to uh, accept each other no matter who the person is. That is the spirit of Christ. He mingled with the rich, he mingled with the poor, he mingled with the blind, those who were even socially outcast, people, Christ, and, and, and remember in, in, in the gospel, the Pharisees were complaining that why do you associate yourself with such people? When the, the, the task collectors invited him for, for, for dinner, he goes. When the uh, sinners invite him, he does. So he didn't discriminate among people. Jesus demonstrated love towards each and every one of us, and so are we also to show that love to whoever comes around. The lesson says something in this lesson. It said, there is no conflict between love and truth. Truth presented humbly and kindly is a statement of love. So does it actually mean that if you don't witness, we don't love enough? I was thinking about it. So if knowing the truth, you will actually care and love others and want them to have life. What you have, you need to share with others. 
So you not sharing the truth means you don't love enough. Can you help me get this? Um, I believe that. I think I still go back to the previous lessons because we draw so much understanding from the other lessons that we studied. Once you, like in our setting as human beings, there are people that we love them so much, so much so that when we hear good news, when we hear bad news, anything we hear, they're the first people we call to tell. Why? It's love. Like you love that person that much. You share everything with them. I think it's the same thing. When we have that kind of relationship with Christ, it sort of revives this urge to spread what you have so that other people also come and know what you are experiencing. And we do that a lot. That's why we share testimonies because you want people to know what God has done for you so that they will keep believing. That's why in, if someone comes to you and they have a problem or something, you direct them to God. You know, it's all sharing. So if you love God, of course, in those instances, when someone has come to you with a problem, it is God that you point the person to, not any other person. So once you have that love and you have that relationship with Christ, you will share his word. And if we are really not doing that, even when we have the opportunity to, then we should really look within ourselves and see if our relationship with God is right or not. So Christians cannot be selfish. We cannot say that what we have is just for us. We've been given to also to give out. So we are conduit that Christ is using to reach out to others. So he said, a city on a hill cannot be hidden. And the light that is in us, we have to let it shine for others to also see. So we cannot be selfish. So if you have the truth and you think you don't want to share because you want to be saved alone, I'm sorry. You need to share. If you truly love Christ, you will let people also know the truth that you have. Michael, I have a, I have a question. Um, I don't know if anyone in the audience can help us, or maybe Anya can help. So um, when you were talking about the acceptance, so where do we as Christians draw the balance? In our relationships with people, in our marriages, like just life in general, such that there are people you know, they keep doing certain things to get it. But because you, Christ has accepted you. So, like, where do we draw the balance and say that I'm going to correct you, but I still love you, I accept you. But does it mean that we just take the person as they are and whatever they do, we just say, hmm, we are there? Or, like, how do we draw the balance? Okay. So, we take two contributions from the audience, like, uh, from the congregation, if anyone wants to help. Okay, Nana, I see Nana hand. Okay. I see two hands. So, Eric, help us with the mic. To Nana first, okay. Well, I, I think... I think the Sabbath school on Thursday's lesson really summed everything up. Um, it read this way that truth without love leads to stiffening legalism, which strangles spiritual life. And it's a fact. If we are presenting the truth and we don't seek the welfare of the one we are preaching to or witnessing to, it becomes, it becomes a challenge. Now, he also goes on to say, so called love without truth leads to tolerant sentimentalism with no substance, leaving an individual adrift on the sea of uncertainty. This is what we got to be also careful. If we, we, we become tolerant of people's conduct and we allow them to drift along, we are putting their salvation in, in a very um, um, uncertain way. But the third point, he said, truth presented in love leads to an authentic Christian experience that provides clear direction, purpose, and certainty. And so if the person you know is uh, putting up a behavioral attitude, that really will not help his salvation. Because you love the person, you try to, uh, in a very um, passionate way, to woo the person to the line of Christ. You don't allow the person to drift along to perish eternally. So this is what my take is. So, Mrs. Mori, give uh, Mori have it, okay. Uh, 
I think uh, Nana have said it all. What I want to put across is that Christ come for the sinners. So nobody is righteous. And uh, I was, I have about two or three candidates I was talking to. So when he was complaining about his character and this, I said, oh, my brother, the person that generates electric bulb, how many times did he do it before he succeeded? So if he can do it several times and succeeded, the word of God is there. It's a light to your life. So even if your character is so bad that, oh, I don't think with all the things I'm doing, I can continue. Continue reading the word. One day, the Holy Spirit will touch your heart and something good will come out of it. And you are a neighbor or a friend. You are preaching to somebody or you are living with somebody. And the person, you know that, is a woman that without men, he can't stay. Or a, a man. He said, oh, as for this guy, I know him, let's go. You pick your Bible, you are going somewhere to preach for somebody. That guy will be there, he said, oh, look at the Christians. He feel that I cannot read the Bible. I feel that I won't understand. But give him the word. Forget all about what he does. That shows you love the person. You cherish him. And you want him to be a candidate for heaven. So we should repeat that person from time to time so that we'll get a good result. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So it's very, very important. So it's very important for us to cultivate that attribute. It's very, very important for us to, uh, to, to cultivate that attribute. And we should remember that without the Spirit of God, there's nothing that we can do. For it is God who works in us to will and to do of his good pleasure. And it's the Spirit of God that will transform our character to the likeness of Christ Jesus. Without the character of Christ, beloved, we cannot have a winning attitude. So we need to allow ourselves for the Spirit to work in us, to transform us, and to lead us in all that we do. And we will be a great asset in the kingdom of God. Uh, let's bow for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that you let your spirit come and abide in us. Transform our character to the likeness of Christ Jesus. Make us willing to witness and help us be doers of your word. In Christ Jesus' name, have we prayed. Amen. morning church we have a couple of announcements for your taking church building project given the entire church is being reminded of our commitment to the ongoing church building project your prayers cash contributions your voice and volunteered ideas are needed to push this project to its completion to the glory of God. By way of encouragement, the church board is appealing to all church members for a minimum contribution of 10 Ghana cities each week. May we give willingly and faithfully as the Lord works to complete the building project. We have two boxes just at the main entrance of the sanctuary. So whenever you come to church and you have 
some money, a minimum of 10 Ghana CDs, you could drop it into the box that has been labeled for that purpose. Prayer time with our elders. Under the leadership of the first elder, starting from next Sabbath, after divine service, the elders will make themselves available for persons who may want to present specific issues to them for a team prayer effort. Come to the elders for an appointment. Member the church board the membership transfer of Inkechi Onoha from Hilltop Seventh-day Adventist Church, Ibema Street, Abba, Abia State, to Prince Emmanuel Seventh-day Adventist Church in the Accra East District. This is the first reading. The church board recommends the church, the membership transfer of Benjamin Opoku from Maranatha SDA Church in the Suhum District to Prince Emmanuel Seventh-day Adventist Church in the Accra East District. Uh, do we have any of them around? Um, Benjamin? Yes, that's our brother Benjamin. The church board recommends the church, the membership transfer of Georgia Champon from the Prince Emmanuel Seventh day Adventist Church in the Accra East District to the La North Seventh day Adventist Church in the Accra East District. This is the first reading. Uh, that is jo uh, George Achampon. He's already gone. So thank you for your attention. And finally, the Sabah School Department says they still have copies of the quarterly. So if you need any, kindly see them after church. May God bless us all. Amen. God is good. And all the time. We thank God for an opportunity to come to church this Sabbath. And as we always do, we're going to have a short health um, discussion. It's very appropriate because I think that the biggest industry that is winning now, or the job that you can never be laid off at this moment, is to be a health worker in the era of, of COVID-19. So everything we need to know, by God's grace, we are going to help you to know. Today, when I was coming to church, I checked the Ghana Health Service dashboard. I want to share these few things with you. As at yesterday, we've done 439,000 tests with 43,949 positives. And this tells us that if you do the test for every 100 people, 10 of them will be positive. So let me bring it down. If you take 10 people and test them, it's likely that one person will test positive. And 270 have died. Immediately our active case started coming down, now we have 1,287. Many of us think that the virus has vanished. And I know people who tell me that there's nothing like COVID-19 at all, because we don't see the death as it's happening in other countries. And I told the person, it reminds me of the story of Noah in Genesis chapter 9. When Noah was saying, it's going to rain, it's going to rain, and people, the people said what? It has never rained before, so it was a lie, until the rains came. In our case, we've seen the rain in other countries, and even in our country, people we know that have fallen ill to the virus, that have died. But still have people who are telling us that there's nothing like COVID-19. I just pray that it will not be like the millions of people who died but I'll be part of the eight who joined Noah into the ark. And what do we say to God? Amen. So please take note of that. Briefly, I want to talk to you about this. Please, what is this? Who can help me with this? Face mask, good. There are different types, right? So we have N95, the one that you see the health workers use. We have the surgical mask and the cloth mask. In April 25th, the government issued a directive that says that Anytime you are going out of your home, you must make sure you wear a mask. The reason is to protect you and protect other people. What this mask does is that it covers your nose and your mouth. We have been told in, in, 
in, in different platforms, even over here, that the virus spreads when we inhale the droplet that comes out of, of an infected person. Not only inhaling, if I don't have the mask and I talk and droplets come and they settle on these tables, and you pick them up and bring your hand closer to your nose or your mouth, you can get it. The only sure way I can prevent myself from getting the virus from you is to cover my nose and my mouth. The show I can protect my sister here is to cover mine so that I don't transfer the droplets to her. But unfortunately, many of us do not wear it the right way. I've seen some of us twist the, the loop to form X, other shapes. I've seen some of us, we've been tied to the stand that it has a new design. <laughs> so I want to talk about this first, and I'll talk about the cloth marks when we are done. Please, anytime you wear the mask, make sure it covers your nose and your mouth. It shouldn't be like a mini skirt kind of uh, mask that you see some people only just around. It should even come down to your jaw. Your, is it your jaw or your chin? <laughs> Thank you very much. So that it's, uh, it secures over here and secures over there to, to protect you. Some of them may be loose. And so when we wear it, it keeps coming down. But you can tie, you can, you can check which length to be working for you and make a, um, a tie around here. So I did the same thing today. So because it was very loose, I've tied it here so that it can secure me. Make sure that when you wear it, there isn't any space here for your hand to even go through. For those who tie it and twist it, realize that immediately you, you, you twist it, it falls up. So you can even put your fingers through and it gets to your face. That's not the right way to wear it. So if it's very loose, please gently remove it. Make sure you can tie it and then have a much smaller um, loop to, to secure or hold your ears. Some of us also say that when we wear it, we can't breathe. That is very true. And that brings me to the part of the cloth mask. Anytime you, you want to wear a cloth mask, and let me say that people have had different designs, and so it comes in different forms. Make sure you can breathe when you wear it. Make sure it, um, it doesn't suffocate you. Those are the two things you need to check. I've seen some of that the, the, the material is too thick, four or five layers, and I think this person wants to protect himself from the virus. Maximum three layers should be fine, but please make sure you can breathe through it. If you bring it down, your nose is exposed. You haven't done anything because you can pick the virus when you inhale the droplets. So our discussion today, if you want to wear the mask, first make, make sure you wash your hands. And let me also add that we have, do you usually wear the surgical mask? There's a blue part and the white part. The white part has the material that can soak sweat and even the droplets. So that one should cover your face. Don't turn it and use the blue side to face yourself. Do you get the point I'm making? Exactly. You just have this, something like a metallic, um, um, yes, at the top. It's supposed to help secure, uh, so once you wear it, make sure you press it to have, um, to, more or less, you press it to secure on your nose so that it doesn't come off when you are talking. But once you wear it properly, it, it gets up to your chin. You tie it so that it's very secured. You don't need to even worry. You can talk as I'm talking, and it will not come out. Please, let's take this very important. Wear the mask when you are going out. Wear it appropriately. Don't wear a mask for more than 12 hours. And if it is wet, please remove So always have one spare in your bag. That spare, put it in a rubber so that it doesn't get contaminated or dirty in your bag before you bring it out. And please, the cloth one, wash it, dry it, and iron it before you wear it the next time. May God bless us as he keeps protecting us. And I'm very hopeful that very soon, life will go back to normal because God is in the business of healing us. I told you last, last week, if there is a place that you should never be afraid of coming, it should be the church. Because it's where the healer is. He's always there around us. Once we pray to him, he hears us. So may God bless us all. Amen.
our God Almighty. You are our God. Honestly, we seek you today. Our souls test for you. Our whole being longs for you. Because we have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld and glory, we can respond. Lord, your love is better than life itself. And we declare that we will glorify you. We will praise you as long and in your name, our hands to do your work. Our dear, we will be feed us, and we will now sing praises unto your name. Amen. So we'll be upstanding. in heaven. We have come unto you to worship you Amen. because you have summoned us here. We plead that you are righteous and holy. We are sinful. Have mercy. Forgive us our sins. Wash us with the precious blood of Jesus Christ and let us be acceptable before you. We came with our burdens. Let your presence envelop this place. And Father, touch every soul here and those watching us from their various places of our birth. And grant the grace that you bless us all. For when we come to you, we always live with blessings. Take charge of this service and let your will be done. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Happy Sabbath. It is such a wonderful time to be in his presence again. And it is good we are here. We are of his greatness. We are how appreciative we are for his goodness and mercies towards us. We invite you to be part of this service. For those of us through the various social we want to warmly welcome into our divine service. This is the time God takes his seat and talks to us. As we listen to him as he speaks through his servant to us. Today is a special day. And as usual as we do, we should have been getting up and hugging and doing our own thing. But we are so much restricted. But we can still do something. And so if you are here and you are very happy to be in his presence, just wave at me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning we have a special couple in our midst. It has happened again. And it's going to happen again. Because more are on their way. To the glory of God this morning in our presence, we have Mr. and Mrs. Dominic Debbie, if you are here, please be on your feet so we can see you. You are warmly welcome. And uh, this is Prince Emmanuel. We are so happy to have both of you here. And we know from today, both of you are going to continue to worship with us. So we continue to worship with the living God. You are mostly welcome. Hallelujah. Making use of hymn number 29, the new uh, the Seventh day Adventist Church hymn 29. Sing praise unto God, and the choir will lead out. Shall we love in outstanding and let us sing with joy?
We shall be on our feet and bow our heads in prayer whilst those in the rostrum will join me as we kneel in the presence of God. awesome God, the ultimate sovereign supreme ruler of the whole universe. We give you praise and adoration and we lift you above all God because there is none like you. You are the only God. O oh Lord, creator, we have come to worship. Our God, we give you the praise and adoration because, Lord, you have been good to us. On this holy Sabbath, when the angels are worshiping, we, your children on earth, we have come also to worship our great creator. Father, I pray that you accept us in your presence. We are praying that angels will be here. We are praying the Spirit of God will be here. Fill our hearts with joy and gladness. Take our burdens, O God, and be gracious unto us. Dear Father, we cannot have enough words to thank you that we have this opportunity to, to gather together as children of God in worship. It's been a long while. Your ways are always the best ways. So we thank you that we can be here. Lord, over the week, we had been about our routine businesses. But, Father, we don't know what we, we might have done. Many of us, we might have hurt you in one way or the other. We might have trespassed against your commands. And so we are pleading in the blood of Jesus for forgiveness. Father, blot out our transgressions. And Lord, do not account to us against our iniquities. But out of the abundance of your grace, forgive us. Father, forgive us. For we are your children. We have nowhere to turn to but to you. That God will have mercy on his children. Now we are asking of you blessings from heaven. Father, out of the bounties of your stores, may you rain upon us blessings. If anyone is here with burden, oh God, be merciful. Take away our burdens. If anyone is here with sickness, oh Lord our God, you are the healer of our diseases. May you heal our diseases. Lord, if anyone is here with some financial challenges, Father, all the minerals, all, everything in this world is yours. Please, look upon your children with pity. And God, meet us at a point of need. Please, take care of our financial needs. There are many whose businesses have gone down. We are pleading with you, God. If you should touch our businesses, we know it will be revived. So touch our businesses, Lord. Our marriage is suffering. Father, we look up to you. 
that you will visit our homes where there are strifes, where there are dissensions, there are divisions among us. Father, bind us together. We plead. We plead, Lord, make us like, like your own. Make us humble. Make us meek and lowly as we worship you. We are inviting your holy presence to be with us today because we are more than two here. So come, come and touch us individually. And Father, be gracious unto us. We commit our preacher into your hands that God, you will bless him. Bless him with your word. May he speak your word and may we be sanctified. We have other brothers and sisters and our children who are not here with us. Father, wherever they are, May the Spirit of God visit them. Amen. Bless them wherever they are. And those who are listening to us, even on social media, Lord, we pray. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, may they receive blessings. Amen. May their knees be met. Amen. Oh, Lord, may we have cause to say, yes, we came to worship our God. And he has met us with goodness and gladness. We thank you for this Holy Sabbath. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Happy Sabbath Church. Happy Sabbath Church. Amen. It's good to see you. You're all back. And it's also good for those of you watching from home, experiencing service with us online. The song says you are ye, so we want to entreat all of you to join us in praising God because I believe we all came here to praise Him, right? All right, so please join us in singing G-Y-A-Y. Amen.
to 899 and I read honor the Lord with your wealth as a first charge on all your earnings just as you have the zeal to obey the ten commandments of God I urge you all to obey this commandment God said honor your word so it's, it's, it's an obligation it's not an opinion God is commanding us to return our tithe and offering for the sake of the kingdom. So I'll call upon the deacon and deaconesses to bring the box forward. And those of us who have not returned our tithes, you can kindly do them. Commodore is thanking God for adding another year to his age. May his name be praised. Amen. Let's pray. Holy Father, your children have obeyed your word by returning their tithe and offering. Holy God, bless them. Those who are sick, heal them. Those whose business are going down, Daddy, revive them. Grant unto them the spirit of a revival. And bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. verse 10 Psalm 46 verse 10 
and I read. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Amen. Amen. Beloved, this morning we have in the pulpit our first elder, Elder Nana Jemfi. He's going to break the word of God to us. Kindly whisper a prayer for him as he mounts the podium. But before he does that, we want to welcome him with a hymn of medica- meditation, SDAH 103. Oh God, our help in ages past and our hope for years to come. Thank God for another opportunity to come and listen to his words. The title of the sermon is, Is This What God Is Like? Let's bow our head in prayer. Father, we thank you we have come unto your feet once again. We need your word, the bread of life, to sustain our spiritual life. We pray that as you speak to our hearts, cause your spirit to work on our minds. Soften our hearts so that we will receive your message with gladness and we will benefit thereby. This is our prayer we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oftentimes, when one finds him or herself in a difficult situation, such as between a rock and a hard place, it's always a challenge. And rarely will you find someone who will have no fear of the potential consequences which the situation might bring. You naturally become worried and hopeless, stressful, don't know where to turn to. A similar situation happened with the Israelites. When they were liberated from Egypt, they came from slavery, and now they were rejoicing on their way to freedom. And the Lord himself 
had led them in their journey with a pillar of a cloud and a pillar of fire. And he stated Ezra chapter 13, verse 21. And the Lord went before them, by the way, in a pillar of a cloud, to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire, to give them light, to go by day and night. So they journeyed on. They were going. They reached a place where God instructed Moses. Moses, we are getting to the Red Sea and camp at the shores of the sea. And Moses obeyed. So he instructed all the Israelites, I call them, please, we are coming to and come here by the seashore. Because nowhere to go further. The direction of the cloud has led them to what? The sea. Then suddenly, they beheld in the distance the flashing armor of shields, spears, spurs, swords, and moving chariots, a sign of the advanced forces of a great army. Then while they were settling, rejoicing in their freedom by the seashore, they saw some shining metals coming. So, mm -mm. This will be the armies of Egypt. And when they drew nearer, terror filled the house of Israel. People were worried. Nowhere to flee from the army of Pharaoh. The Israelites were encamped beside the sea, and whose waters presented a seemingly impassable barrier before them. While on the south, a rugged mountain obstructed their further progress. They were caging now. An easy prey for the Egyptian army. Some cried unto the Lord, but the majority rushed to Moses. Hey, we said it. We said it with your complaints. And this is captured Ezra chapter 14, verse 11 to 12. Ezra chapter 14, verse 11 to 12. And they said to Moses, and they said to Moses, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Where did you, why did you make us leave Egypt? Yes. You want us to come and perish in the desert. There are beautiful gravesites in Egypt. We could have been buried there. They continue. Didn't we tell you this will happen while we were still in Egypt? He said. And we said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a dead body in the wilderness. Now they have even regretted in following Moses. And the armies of Pharaoh were coming, getting closer. Of a truth. There was no possibility of deliverance at this moment from the hands of the strong army of Egypt. But Moses felt no fear of the consequences. His calm and assuring reply to the people could be found in Ezra chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. He wasn't afraid at all. The armies of Pharaoh are coming. You don't have any, any, any. Um, spears or swords or whatever to fight with. And you are so calm like that. Let's hear what he pronounced in Ezra chapter 14, 13, and 14. Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, 
You shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you. And ye shall ha hold your peace. This is strange. What's the secret of Moses? The, you know, you see the problem. The children's school fees don't have money to pay. And you are mouthing. Yeah, your marriage is breaking down. And you are mouthing, the Lord will face it. It's when the man goes out, he doesn't even come back home. What is happening? What, what is the secret of Moses? And I gleaned this from Psalm 56, verse 3. The word of God says, uh, before, let's, let's go, I think I've read that. Psalm 56, verse 3. What time I'm afraid, I will trust in thee. Amen. Amen. The time that I'm afraid, Lord, get my fears. I can't anymore. I'm breaking down. This job, job I'm having is drifting away from me. I don't have patronage any longer. Father, I give this job back to you. Give it to me. Take charge. And you see how God will work through for you. When you are afraid and you trust in him, there's something that God gives you. Isaiah chapter 20 says, verse 3 to 4. And this thing, Moses had it. He said that, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. So when you, when you give your burden to, to God, when the business that is collapsing is given to God, I'm telling you, he takes charge and grants you peace. Say, my son, Amen. I will face it. Don't worry. And that gives you some kind of respite. And that gives you the opportunity to sing praises to him. Our God is faithful. This is why Moses felt no fear of the consequences. For he knew whom he has believed and knew no one can deliver out of God's powerful hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, our God is a gentle shepherd. But sometimes when our behavioral attitudes, you know, provoke him, he flexes. And he is flexing in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39 and 40. Let's listen to him. God, talk, God talks about himself. He said, look now. I myself am he. And there is no other God but me. I am the one who kills and gives life. I am the one who wounds and heals. And no one can be rescued from my powerful hand. In verse 40 he says, now I raise my hand to heaven and declare, as surely as I live, no one can stand me. Why? He created all things. He created all things. All human beings, he created them. He is powerful over them. He can give you life. He can take away life. In Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27, he affirms this. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27. He said, I am the Lord, the God of all the peoples of the world. Is anything too hard for me? That's the question. What are the challenges in your life? God will dissolve them in the blood of Jesus. Amen. He is a faithful God. He will never disappoint you. Indeed, he has never disappointed anybody before. And you will not be the first. This is the God we serve. Moses knew that the Egyptians would be no match for God. With such all conquering power of Jehovah. So he felt no fear of the potential consequences. For he knew the almighty capabilities of God. Hallelujah. In Isaiah chapter 20, it says verse 4. Isaiah is encouraging us to trust God. He says, trust ye in the Lord forever. For in the love of Jehovah is everlasting strength. When you trust him, relax. Don't worry your head over the consequences. Don't worry. He's in charge. And when he's in charge, there is peace. Hallelujah. But now, as the Egyptian army approached the camp of the Israelites, expecting to make them an easy prey, the cloudy column rose majestically and descended between the approaching army of Pharaoh and the camp of the Israelites. And so, 
the chariots, the horses, the commanders, they couldn't find their way. Because the cloud has separated them from the camp of Israel. And what do you say to God? Amen. And when it was getting darker, there was darkness in the side of the Egyptians. But God radiated light in the camp of Israel. The pillar of cloud. Now darkness to the Egyptians, sunshine to the Israelites. The Egyptians could no longer descend the camp of the Israelites. And so they were forced to stop. They couldn't go. The horses couldn't find their way. But as the darkness of night deepened, the wall of cloud became a great light to the Israelites and flooded the entire camp with the radiance of the day. This is the God we serve. Amen. When this happened, then hope returned to the house of Israel. And then God instructed Moses, lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And it came to pass. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the God we serve. Amen. And it came to pass. Amen. Oftentimes, we limit the power of God with our own belief. And I tell you, when you don't believe, nothing will happen. It's a fact. When we become overwhelmed by the seemingly difficult problems we have. So your marriage is bigger than God. The school fees, they are bigger than God. Your job is bigger than God. Then be there. When we do that, we tempt God and limit the power of God to deliver us from our problems. When, when we do that, with unbelief, you will limit God. But our God is unlimited. He's a sovereign God. And he's powerful. Ready to deliver his children. The Israelites intermittently, throughout their journey with God, tempted him with their own belief, limiting the power of God to work in their behalf. So when you read the history of the Israelites, oftentimes they were doing this, doubting God. And the psalmist said, <coughs> excuse me, yeah, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Psalm 78, verse 41. Yeah, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Psalm 78, verse 41. Our God is unlimited. He's all-powerful. So let us depend on him. If we, must trust, if we trust God, if we believe in him, then let's speak faith into our problems and our challenges. Amen. Speak faith into the problems and issues. Yes, this marriage is going down. Hey, my, my husband, you, you are the son of God. You can never leave me. I'm pronouncing this to you. I believe in Jehovah. Yes. They remove their race. Tell them you will come and pick them back. Any challenge that you have, demonic challenges, speak to those problems. This body belongs to God. If there is any more demon there, we start to quit. Let's speak to the problems. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, we having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore I spoke. We also believe, and therefore speak. Paul says he believed, so he spoke. You too believe. Speak to your problems. Speak faith into to your problems. And God will come true for you. We are having the same spirit of faith as Moses. For he believed and spoke faith into the problem. That the Israelites were facing. What are your problems? Are they bigger than God? Let me tell you something for free. Our God is overly able. I don't know what your challenges are. But God is more than able to fix them. Random, let me tell you a short story. It was in July 1985 in Paris, France. In those days, 
there were tourist buses that were trekking between Hamburg and Paris. So the, there was these uh, golden watches which were in vogue. At the time, everybody wanted to, to, to have one. It, was, it looks fashionable. So we, we took advantage of it. And together with a friend of mine, which is called Joanna, we joined the tourist bus and left for Paris. And when we reached there, we went and purchased some of the golden watches. And we joined the metro, the underground railway system of, of, of France, to another suburb of, of Paris to, to look for more golden watches. But while we were on the, on the train, we were conversing. And uh, when we came to ourselves, the, what, what we saw was that the train has reached the station where to alight. But while we were conversing, we, 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 we didn't realize it. So Joanna prompted them, hey, we have freed the place. And normally, the doors of the, of the train will shut automatically. So um, she rushed out, and I followed her. So the door shut immediately, and the train left. Then he said, yeah. I said, what is this, Joanna? He said, my bag. I said, what? It was containing 15,000 documents in those days. That was money. And the golden watches that she has purchased. So I immediately rushed to the station master, those who are at the railway station try to coordinate things. I said, sir, we have, a, we, we have a challenge. My sister here left um, her back in the train. If you can alight the next stop so that they can really look for it for us. The train station master shook their head. Here in Paris, <laughs> it doesn't work. Even when you are holding, they want to take it away from you. And you left it in the train. Don't worry your head. I say, please, I beg you. You do it for us. So, well, he really connected. And as he was really talking to the radio, there was a pillar closer. So I went beside the pillar. I said, Father, I plead with you. You've never disappointed me before. This lady has lost a fortune. I pray that let one of your angels take care of the bag and let one of your children pick the bag for us so that we can find a bag. I plead with you. I'm grateful for answered prayer. Amen. So I went back to the man. The man said, ah, I told you. They went to check the, the coach, that particular coach, but the thing is gone. I said, no problem. Then Joanna began wailing. I said, don't worry. Don't worry. I have, I have, I have spoken to God. Say, spoken to what? I said, I've spoken to God. Say, do you know the things in the back? I said, I understand. Please. You, let's catch our trip. Go back and wait for the bus to send us back to Hamburg. I said, are you, excuse me, normal? How can I cross the border without my passport? My passport is also in the back. I said, don't worry. God is in control. Okay, if you say so, let's go. So, we left, joined the bus. The bus came, so we joined it. And hmm. I was sleeping when Joanna woke me. We had the border. And the immigration officers are coming. I said, look, be calm. So you, you have a passport, so I, be, I should be calm. I said, no. <laughs> it's not like that. We've spoken to God. Let's wait on him. Forget about the consequences. Whether they will arrest you or not, he's in charge. So he brought me here to be arrested. I said, you be calm. And know that God is God. In, in, in Psalm 130 verse 5, King David says, Psalm 130 verse 5, I wait for the Lord, my soul that wait, and in his word do I hope. I was waiting on the Lord. I trust in his word. I hope in his word. He's promised that he's going to come through for us when we are in straight places. So I'm not, I'm not doubting him today. And I won't doubt him anytime. And then, 
They kept coming. They kept coming. We made two seats before us. Then Joanna said, Sh shook me, I said, be calm. <laughs> then we heard the driver, you know, shouting back at the immigration officers. One of them also shouted back. And there was some kind of interchanging of words. So they got angry and told them, let's get off this fucking bus. And then they got off. And Joanna said, they're going, they're going. I said, yes, this is the God we serve. Say, praise the Lord. Amen. Say, now I believe I can get my bus, my bag. Say, yes, you, you get your bag. And so we reached Hamburg. And when we were separating, I said, Joanna, in a situation like this, you know what, uh, we need to fast and pray. I know God will do it, but we also have to importune him. He said, what did you say? I said, fasting and prayer. I said, yeah, the prayer, the Yacouba, fasting by 7 a.m. If I don't get my banku or fufu, I have headache. It's a medical challenge. Say, Joanna. <laughs> okay, I'll do, I'll do the fasting. So together we'll be praying. He said, okay, fine. Then fasted the next day, I didn't hear anything. The following day, Joanna called me. She said, you know what? I said, no. I opened my mailbox. There was a brown envelope. I opened it and my passport is in it. I said, glory be to God. We'll keep on praying. I said, but the passport, I need the money. He said, yes, I know. I know. But uh, look into the passport. So maybe they would have. So yeah, he, he looked in and saw a piece of paper. The passport was coming from the Ghanaian embassy in, in France. And that somebody brought it, that they found a bag and it was in. And so there's a telephone number. You have to call the person so that you can connect. So Joanna said, my goodness, it's going to happen. So what did she do? She called the person. The person picked the phone and said, yes, um, I'm going to test you my address in Paris. And then you'll come over today or tomorrow, and you'll have your bag. Joanna was highly excited. And she called me. Said, can we go together? It's OK. I can go with you. So we went. We reached Paris. This time we went by train. Because we were in a hurry. No need for sightseeing the notorious bus. So when we reached there, we, found, we traced the address, got a taxi. We went to the address. And then we saw the apartment. We went, rang the bell. There was no answer. Rang the bell, no answer. So the next door neighbor opened the door. He said, who are you looking for? He said, oh, well, one Mr. Sadiq. So, oh, he's been ejected. In fact, he didn't have money to pay his rent. So he was been, he's been ejected yesterday. And do you want to look at my face? <laughs> I said, take it easy. Let's keep trusting God. So we're standing there. I said, look, there is a piece of paper in the dollar. Do you want to pull it? Open it. There's a telephone number. Why don't you call the number? We called. The person who took the, the phone was Sadiq. Mr. Sadiq said, are you Joanna? I said, yes, I'm Joanna. I said, OK. Come to downtown. He gave us an address, a tailoring shop. When we go, we should ask for a particular name. The person will let us wait for, for, for him. So we're excited. We went to the place. We met the person. The person gave us a place to sit. And they said that Mr. Sadi will come at 4. We reached there around 10 o'clock. But it was worth waiting. <laughs> you have to wait. We waited, waited. And when people are entering, we'll be really examining them. Is this Mr. Sadiq? <laughs> so 4 o'clock, Mr. Sadiq has not shown up. 4.30, Mr. Sadiq. And Joanna said, are you sure this man will bring the bag? I said, I'm just waiting on God. So just keep believing. He said, OK. Five o'clock, then an elderly man walked into the shop, the tailoring shop, and then approached the man that has directed us to sit. And he pointed at us. And Joanna said, I believe this is Sadiq. So he came, he was holding a big politician bag. 
And he said, um, are you Joanna? He says, I'm Joanna. Retrieve the bag from the bulletin bag. Say, is this your bag? He said, yes. So check whether everything is intact. So Joanna opened the bag, check everything, even the money was intact. So he didn't cut, he dipped his hand into and picked some leaves of documents. He said, this is for you. The man said, no, 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 no. I don't need it. You don't need it? I was informed you were ejected. He said, that doesn't concern you. <laughs> ah, okay. Took the money and put it back in, his, in, in their bag. So we turned them all. We stood there, we were shocked. And when we were going down to take the train back to Humber, Joanna would walk a while and stop. Hey! Is this what God is like? I will be a Christian. Yeah. You'll be going here, you will exclaim, hey! Is this what God is like? I'll be a Christian. And so, friends, no matter the challenges, our God is able. God be with you. Amen. Beloved, we want to thank God for this wonderful message. Amen. Amen. We are bringing our service to a close, and we are going to make use of hymn number 319. S-D-A-H 319. Lord, I want to be a Christian. Shall we all be upstanding as we sing?
Lord has penned it in the Bible. That any time we gather to worship him by his sermons, we should be blessed in this way. So receive the blessings of God because he says that when you are blessed in this way, he'll put his name upon you and he'll bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord makes his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Beloved, we have brought our service to a close. And may we know if we have few visitors visiting us for the very first time. In this auditorium, today is the first time you are worshiping with us. Can you just raise your hand? Because once you are here, it means we have your details. One, two, three, four. And what do we say to them? Amen. Our beloved, we are happy you joined us to worship the living God and because of the restrictions, we can have our normal interactions with you. But since we have your details, we'll definitely get back to you. And so be ready for some calls from us. We will call you, we'll pray with you, and then we'll study with you because our God is able. Amen. The only announcement left is that all elders, all deacons, and the communication team want to have a short meeting immediately we disperse. And so please, if you are among this group of persons, just uh, stay back as we file out. For our brother Dominic and uh, Lodina, I want to thank you very much for coming and God richly bless you. And because of that, we will ask you to file out first and then the, the, our ushers will do with us the rest. God bless all of you. And for those of us who join us, through our social media handles, we say God bless you and keep you. Amen.